They call it the lucky country, a land of endless sun, fertile plains, and wide open skies. A place that helped feed the world and built its identity on agriculture. But luck has a way of running out, especially when the ground beneath your feet turns to dust. Australia, once a global agricultural superpower, is now facing a crisis that threatens its very foundation. Its greatest asset, the land itself, is deteriorating faster than anyone imagined. Every year, millions of hectares lose their ability to grow food. Entire farms fall silent. Families leave land that once sustained them for generations. And hidden inside this crisis is a solution so unexpected, so ordinary, that almost no one saw it coming. Sheep wool, not satellites, not artificial intelligence, not trillion dollar infrastructure projects, just wool discarded, unwanted, and left to rot. This humble fiber is quietly rewriting the future of farming in one of the driest nations on Earth. And its impact may reach far beyond Australia. Australia is home to more than 427 million hectares of agricultural land. For decades, that sheer scale created an illusion of permanence. No matter how much was farmed, there always seemed to be more, more land, more grass, more resilience but land remembers. After decades of intensive farming, monocropping, and heavy chemical use, Australian soil has lost more than 60% of its organic matter. This isn't just a statistic. Organic matter is what gives soil life. It's what allows water to stay, roots to breathe, and microorganisms to survive. Without it, soil becomes powder. In New South Wales, soil organic carbon dropped another 3.1%, between 2006 and 2020 alone. That decline means less water retention, fewer nutrients, and soil that behaves more like sand than earth. In Western Australia, the damage is visible even from the air. Windstorms don't just carry dust, they carry livelihoods. In some regions, up to 1.8 tons of topsoil per hectare are blown away every year. Soil that took hundreds of years to form disappears in a single afternoon. Across the country, more than 6 million hectares are now classified as being at extremely high risk of erosion. Another 3.2 million are collapsing under water-induced degradation. In Queensland, once productive farms have been abandoned because the soil structure has failed completely. Rain falls, but the ground can't hold it. Crops are planted, but roots can't anchor. When land collapses, everything connected to it begins to shake. Food security weakens, rural economies shrink, national confidence erodes. And while this slow motion disaster unfolded beneath the surface, another problem was piling up above it. Australia's wool industry, once a symbol of national pride, was unraveling. For generations, merino sheep made Australia the wool capital of the world. Wool exports once exceeded $4 billion a year. Entire towns were built around shearing sheds, processing plants, and export routes. But global markets changed. Synthetic fibers took over. Demand declined. Prices collapsed. By 2025, national wool production is expected to fall to just 279 million kilograms, more than 12% lower than the previous year. And much of the wool that is produced no longer has a buyer. Every year, roughly 200,000 tons of waste wool accumulate on Australian farms. Wool too coarse, too dirty, or too expensive to process. Farmers can't sell it. Disposal costs money. Burning it pollutes. Leaving it to decompose takes years. It became a symbol of failure, a reminder of an industry in decline, until someone asked a different question. What if this problem could solve another problem? When scientists began studying waste wool, they weren't looking for miracles. But what they found was remarkable. Wool fibers are composed primarily of keratin, a durable protein with unique physical properties. Each strand is naturally crimped, creating microscopic air pockets. These pockets trap oxygen and allow airflow through soil. Even more importantly, wool can absorb between one and a half to two times its own weight in water. Unlike synthetic materials, it releases that water slowly. For soils that had lost their ability to retain moisture, this was exactly what was missing. Early experiments were simple. In New South Wales, researchers spread a thin layer of waste wool over degraded soil. Within weeks, evaporation dropped by up to 35%. Moisture remained in the soil nearly twice as long, 
as areas covered with traditional organic mulch. But the real surprise came underground. Soil microbes, bacteria, and fungi essential for nutrient cycling returned rapidly. In some trials, microbial density increased by 30 to 50 percent in just a few months. This microbial resurgence began rebuilding organic matter naturally, restarting processes that had been dormant for decades. In Queensland, where abandoned fields had cracked open under relentless heat, wool mulch changed the outcome of an entire growing season. Farmers reported less wind erosion, better moisture retention, and soil that could finally be worked again. No longer brittle red dust, but friable, living earth. Still, raw wool had limitations. Left unprocessed, it clumped together. It decomposed slowly. Water sometimes struggled to pass through dense mats of fiber. So, the next phase began, refinement. Wool was cleaned, ground, and compressed into pellets. These small granules could be mixed directly into the soil, evenly distributed across fields. Once wet, the pellets expanded, absorbing water. As the soil dried, they contracted, releasing moisture back into the root zone. Each pellet functioned like a miniature reservoir. In field trials, soils treated with wool pellets retained moisture 25 to 40 percent longer than untreated soils. For farmers facing hotter summers and less predictable rainfall, this difference meant survival. Alongside pellets came wool compost. By composting, wool with organic matter and microorganisms, keratin slowly broke down, releasing nitrogen, sulfur, organic carbon, and trace minerals. Unlike synthetic fertilizers, nutrients were released gradually, reducing runoff and leaching. Within months, soil structure improved, microbial communities stabilized, heat tolerance increased, in many regions, crop yields rose by 12 to 18 percent without additional chemical inputs. What began as an experiment turned into a system, and then it turned into an industry. In Victoria alone, more than 40 wool recycling startups emerged in a single year. They created over 2,500 jobs in rural areas, places that had been shrinking for decades. Waste wool was transformed into a product worth three times more than raw fleece. For farmers, wool was no longer a liability. It became a secondary income stream. For communities, it meant renewed purpose. But the story didn't stop at Australia's borders. In New Zealand, where sheep outnumber people, farmers faced similar challenges. Sandy coastal soils struggled to retain moisture. Volcanic soils lost microbial life under intensive use. When wool mulch was introduced, moisture retention improved by up to 30%. On the North Island, researchers observed microbial recovery within weeks. Vineyards in Marlborough reduced irrigation needs by a quarter during dry months simply by using wool as ground cover. Startups developed biodegradable wool-based biopolymers with even higher water holding capacity, expanding applications beyond farming into landscaping and erosion control. In the United States, wool found a different niche. American sheep production is relatively small, but organic farming is growing rapidly. Organic growers need natural fertilizers that meet strict certification standards. Wool pellets filled that gap. On farms in California, Colorado, and Vermont, wool provided slow-release nitrogen without chemical inputs. After two months, nitrogen leaching dropped by up to 22%. Soil moisture remained stable 18 to 25% longer. Some farms began advertising it directly, grown with wool pellets. For consumers, it became a symbol of transparency and sustainability. And then came solar grazing. Across the United States, massive solar farms require constant vegetation management. Mowing beneath panels is expensive, dangerous, and inefficient. Herbicides damage soil and biodiversity. Sheep offered a better solution. They graze low-growing plants without damaging infrastructure. Their manure fertilizes the soil. The shade from solar panels reduces evaporation, allowing grasses and microbes to thrive. Maintenance costs dropped by half. Fertilizer use fell by 70%. In states like Texas, Colorado, and California, solar grazing restored vegetation two to three times faster than conventional methods. Entire service industries emerged, professional grazing crews that manage sheep, soil, and solar infrastructure together. This is where the story widens. Because what's happening here isn't just about wool, 
It's about rethinking systems. Waste becomes resource. Agriculture reconnects with ecology. Energy production supports biodiversity instead of destroying it. Now, imagine this model applied globally. In the Sahel, where desertification advances every year, small-scale trials are testing wool mulch to stabilize soil and retain moisture for millet and sorghum. In the Middle East, wool pellets are being evaluated as a way to reduce irrigation demand in extreme heat. In South America's arid highlands, wool-based soil treatments are showing early signs of improved germination and structure. This solution doesn't require massive infrastructure. It doesn't depend on fossil fuels. It uses materials already available in agricultural regions worldwide. Most importantly, it restores something that modern farming often forgets, balance. Because soil isn't just dirt, it's a living system. And when we work with it instead of against it, recovery becomes possible. A strand of wool may seem insignificant, soft, fragile, ordinary, but woven together, those strands can hold water, rebuild soil, revive economies, and reconnect humanity with the land that sustains it. So the next time you see a sheep grazing quietly in a field, remember this, it might not just be producing wool, it might be helping save the future of farming itself. What do you think? Can something this simple really make a difference? Share your thoughts in the comments. If this story made you think differently about sustainability, give it a like. And if you want more stories about unexpected solutions to global problems, subscribe and stay with us. Thanks for watching.